Okay, we're going anyway. Right, good evening. Um, I'm Councillor Ian Edwards, uh, and I'm Chairman of the Major Applications uh, Planning Subcommittee, Height Speed 2. Um, there have been no members of the public present. We're going to go straight into the agenda. So, agenda item one, please, apologies for absence. We've had apologies from Councillor Oswald and Councillor Morse is substituted. Thank you very much, but they appear to be delayed at the moment. Item two, declarations of interest, matters coming before this meeting. None. Item three, sign and agree the minutes of uh, the last meeting, which was the 4th of June 2019. They were in the packet, they agreed. Thank you. Item four, no matters have been notified in advance are urgent. And item five is to confirm that everything will be in part one. So we're now turning to item six, please, Ian. Thank you very much, Councillor. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, so before us today are two applications under Schedule 17 of the HS2 Act. Um, I'll start with item six, which is um, first submissions for the approval of the bringing into use of work 168 and 168A. So these are scheduled works under the HS2 Act. And um, before you can bring a scheduled work into use, you have to come to the local authority for approval to do just that. Uh, it is a new access road into the MSD facility off Breakspear Road South uh, in Ickenham. Uh, the request is made in relation to Schedule 17, Part 1, Paragraph 9 of the Act, and the relevant authority, i.e. us, the Council, must grant approval for the scheme if it considers there are no reasonably practicable measures which need to be taken for the purpose of mitigating the effect of the work or its operation on the local environment or local amenity. Uh, unlike other applications we've dealt with at this committee, we can request conditions, and those conditions do not need to be approved by HS2 in advance. Those conditions can only be imposed, um, similar to the normal rules, to preserve the local environment or local amenity, to pre preserve a site of archaeological or historic interest, or in the interest of nature conservation, and that the scheme is reasonably capable of being modified to do so. So that's the decision-making context. Uh, now to the scheme. So the red line boundary on the uh, map in front of you broadly shows the, the area where the work will happen. The road will be within inside that red line boundary. This also contains item seven on the agenda as well. Uh, for context, this is broadly the alignment of the route into the existing facility. This is a uh, for anyone who knows Breakspear Road South at the minute, this is an old aerial photograph, uh, but it does provide a, a context as to how it will link up with the facility. It's useful to get a better degree of context this time around because this application falls within a myriad of works in the area. So anyone, as I said, who's been on Breakspear Road South recently will, will see a, a fundamentally different site to the aerial photograph we just saw. It's effectively a large-scale construction site. Uh, most of that is preliminary works to make way for the new high speed line which you can see in front of you which is the big black line in the middle uh, at point A on the map you'll see the existing crossing with the Chiltern line so Breakspear Road South goes under the Chiltern line at that point uh, point B is the access road to the MSD facility as it stands uh, hence the reason it needs to move um, also at B is the crossing point of the um, public right of way, the U46, which links up with U42 to the west of uh, Breakspear Road South, and the alignment of U46 can be seen at about C. So again, also underneath the, the new alignment, so that's the reason why it has to be shifted further north. Uh, e is the dotted line, oh sorry, D is the, the new access road that loops around uh, a new potential um, flood mitigation pond, that discussion is still ongoing. You'll also see a couple of other annotations on the map there which show trees and also grasslands. So there's some uh, landscaping work to be completed in due course, but that's not part of this approval. I'll talk about that more in, uh, in, in time. E is the red dotted line showing the new footpath route uh, linking up with the access road and then along the existing alignment of the U42 to the west. Uh, F broadly indicates the position of the access road. 
as it connects in with the, the existing access road. These plans have changed slightly now that the contractors have got hold of them and developing, developing them further. Uh, but what this map does show is sort of broadly gives a necessary context as to where this access road, broadly at D, fits within what is a large scale amount of work at the minute. So the issue before us today is that access road, not the large scale works that are happening, the mitigation for the access road, not the mitigation for the large, large scale construction works. And that's an important point to make because we've obviously had some representations in the, um, as part of the submission, part of the consultation, that are concerned about the amount of devastation in the area, the loss of hedgerows and so on and so forth. The issue before us is the access road alone. What will happen in due course is uh, HS2 Limited and their contractors, which is SCS in this area, um, and align to the, uh, to the west, they will present a, a master plan of their landscaping, which is due to come to us in February, uh, which will start to be a, their starting point as to how the borough will look when they've finished. So that will be dealing with the landscaping arrangements and all the mitigation for all the other works that you see on Breakspear Road South at the minute. Um, I talked about the rights of way, taking all the HS2 annotations off, a little bit more easier to follow. So U46 uh, to the east of Breakspear Road South and U42 to the west, <coughs> the high speed line effectively severs that section so we have to find a new way of getting them of getting uh, pedestrians from one side to the other and that broadly follows the the red line there this is what is before us today is the access road bringing this into use uh, there are limited controversial issues with this one in fact there are there are none I'll come on to the one big point of, of concern at the minute to the south of this will be the landscaping the embankment work for the actual high speed line. So in terms of this sitting within the green belt, which it does, the, the road will be screened to the south by the pond works and the woodland planting, as discussed previously, and also the embankment works. To the north, it's an agricultural field, so it's not considered to impact on the openness of the green belt to the north. So in terms of mitigation for this, the primary concern that we had was with the original submission at the top of this plan. You'll see that the, the public right of way, the yellow line, attaches to the access road uh, at the point, at the junction with Breakspear Road South. Officers considered that to be an extremely dangerous crossing point, uh, given at this point that it's a rural road with speed limits that would be inappropriate for vehicles to be turning across, and sight lines for pedestrians would be compromised. So we secured mitigation within the design to move that access point and the crossing point of the bridleway onto the footway to the north side of the uh, new access road, uh, shifted that several metres further in, which we can now consider to be um, a safer environment for pedestrians. Also it's worth noting that in this new design, a lot of the vegetation at the access point has been removed. Again, this frees up sight lines and makes for what we consider to be a safer operation of that junction compared to what there is at the minute. So in general, Chair, um, officers didn't feel like there was um, any need for any conditions. Um, the only mitigation that we deemed necessary was secured as part of the, de the redesign of this, which HS2 Limited were, were happy to um, go along with. and. Uh, we eventually received these plans. Um, so based on that, Chair, um, the recommendation is for an approval, no conditions are necessary in the officer's opinion, uh, and no informatives are necessary. The mitigation is considered to be part of the scheme now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I please just test my understanding of the overall picture? This is with regards to the landscaping of the public right-of-way, the new public right-of-way, which is obviously within the red line site shown here. Will that landscaping also come forward as part of the landscaping of the pond, or are they going to say, no, this is a red line site for this bit, and there's a new red line site for the other, which excludes this particular piece of work? 
for the red line for this site includes the bridle way purely for item 7 which is the alignment of the fencing um, the bridle way actually forms part of a schedule 4 submission which is uh, currently with the council um, that's not part of this discussion tonight the, the crossing point was for obvious reasons the council felt that or the officers felt that we couldn't bring this road into use while there was a dangerous crossing point but the rest of the bridle way including the landscaping is out with the the consideration tonight. That will come at a later point. Thank you very much. I, I, I understand now. Um, so residents should be reassured that there are opportunities that will be presented in the due course to enable us to ensure adequate landscaping and mitigation against the development works that are happening. You can confirm that. Yes, that's correct. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor Lavery. Um, noting, uh, noting the officer comments and the fact that uh, landscaping mitigation, which would have been my principal concerns uh, around this proposal, um, are not part of tonight and will come forward at a later date, um, I would be happy to propose um, that we accept officer recommendations. Thank you very much. Councillor Brightman, you indicating? Uh, thank you very much. Show of hands, please. Everybody, thank you. Item 7. Thank you, Chair. Item 7 is... Uh, even more straightforward, hopefully. Um, the permission for item 7 is sought under Schedule 17, Part 1, Paragraph 6, Row 5 and 6 of the table. Uh, the Council is being asked to approve the alignment of the fence, or fencing, um, along the new access road and in various parts of the MSD facility. Uh, it is important to note that the fence type is not up for consideration. It's just the alignment of the fencing. Um, an oddity of the act I have to say um, given that we're probably more interested in the type of fencing than the actual alignment in certain instances um, but nonetheless the council did uh, the original plans that were submitted the council did have concerns with some of the fence types uh, particularly along the northern side of the footway along the access point uh, which would ultimately form a, a, the barrier of the, the right of way uh, the proposal from HS2 Limited was for a barbed wire top wooden fence, which we, we consider to be unacceptable. Uh, even though it's not up for discussion or uh, consideration, HS2 Limited were kind enough to alter their plans to reflect what is a more appropriate type now, which is a, a post and wooden uh, fence boarding type of construction that you can see in the top right of that. Uh, elsewhere, the fence types of relatively sympathetic to the area. Um, there's an existing security fence around the existing MSC facility and that's effectively what's being replicated here. Um, so in terms of the fencing, in terms of the alignment, officer recommendation is that that's acceptable. Also as part of this submission is the type of lighting that's going along the footway uh, and on the start of the access point. Council challenged HS2 Limited on the type of lighting um, they came back with a, a fairly robust specification that the type of lighting was an improvement on what's there at the minute. Um, it's a, a very low lux level, but sufficient enough to meet British standards for rights of way. Um, there is already lighting in the area. The impacts on residents will be uh, limited, more so because HS2 Limited will be removing the residential property to the uh, east of the road. So the impacts on the green belt are considered to be uh, appropriate and again the officer recommendation is for approval no conditions no informatives necessary thank you very much there seems to be very little we can do with this one council Tucker. yeah thank you mr chairman i think it's good that we've secured a more appropriate type of fencing so that's uh, good news uh, on the basis of, of where we are with this one i'd be happy to move up with the recommendation thank you very much council lavery i will second that thank you show of hands please on this one everybody thank you that concludes the meeting Thank you, Chairman. Oh, <laughs>